In 1923, the National Museum of Asian Art became the Smithsonian's first art museum on the National Mall in Washington, D.C. And over the past century, the museum has curated and developed one of the most significant Asian art collections. It's now home to more than 46,000 artworks, 5,400 of which have been collected since 2018 when Chase Robinson took the helm of the museum as its director. During that time, he has taken a growing interest in Korean art as well, having visited the country multiple times. And this year, the museum also announced an endowed curatorial position in Korean art and culture uh, that it will be established for the first time as well. He is back in Korea once again. And he stopped by KBS today to talk to us for this week's Touch Basins Hall. He's with us now, Mr. Robinson. Hello, and thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Can you first uh, tell us about what you've been doing in Korea? Well, we have been busy. It's uh, a pleasure to return to Seoul. I was here, I think, as few as nine or ten months ago. We've been terribly busy in various meetings, but we have had the opportunity to leave Seoul once. We went to Cheongju to the museum. Mm. And the reason we went to that museum on Sunday, I arrived on Saturday night, was to... Um, well, it's a lovely museum, as you'll probably know, built into the to the side of the mountain, but also because they're showing right now um, the Egoni collection, and Fine, we were course. very very keen to uh, to see how they're presenting that material. So we spent a lovely day, and then of course we visited various museums. We've been to the National Museum, we've been to the Liam, we've been to the Museum of Modern Contemporary Art. We did pay our respects to the Korea Foundation, which I should say is very generously supporting our efforts to establish that first ever curatorial position. So it's been a great pleasure. So yes, I understand that the Korean art scene has really flourished in recent years as well, uh, particularly internationally. Have you seen that uh, change over the years as you've been coming to Korea? I have. I remember coming for the first time about 15 years ago. And uh, of course, many of the museums were in place but they're now prospering. I think what's really changed is the gallery scene. You'll be aware that Freeze was here recently. So there's an energy about contemporary art. I think there's also a sophistication in terms of the work that the museums are doing. And there's a willingness on our part as well as their part to work together. And so that's what, what makes returning to, to Seoul really a pleasure is to, is to build the relationships that we've begun to build and to seek ways of collaborating together. Okay, as I mentioned at the start, you are the director of the National Museum of Asian Art. Can you tell our listeners a bit about the museum? It's marking its 100th anniversary this year. We opened our doors on May 9th, 1923. Um, as I like to say, we opened our doors at the beginning of what, in retrospect, is sometimes called the American century. And right. we turn 100 at a moment in which the world is a very different place, in which... Um, Political capital and financial capital and creative capital is much more distributed, and Seoul is a wonderful example of that. So we have um, the great good fortune of being America's first national art museum, and we got our start with a collection assembled by an American industrialist named Charles Lang Freer, who by the time of his death in 1919 had amassed what was then and probably will always be the greatest collection of Asian art. So we started off with about 9,500 pieces. Mm. As you said in the introduction, we're now at 46 or 47,000 pieces. And we have a, a really broad and I think interesting portfolio, not just of collections and exhibitions, but programming. A single example, the Saturday before I left, we celebrated Chusak for the first time at the museum. Mm. Um, it was a great pleasure. We had something like 5,500 people who came wow. to uh, become acquainted, for the most part, for the first time with uh, that terribly important uh, Korean festival. So we had programming, we had uh, cooking demonstrations, we had a photo booth, we had gallery tours, we had a chariot table, we had lots of different things so that our visitors could get a taste, literal and figurative, of Korean culture. Wow, so that clear that the museum is really doing a lot to try and help people learn more about Korea and 
Korean culture and Korean art. Can you tell us more about that connection the museum has had with uh, Korea and the Korea collection that the museum has? Well, we're very fortunate because part of that original gift to the museum, those 9,500 pieces, was really an extraordinary uh, collection of Korean ceramics. And so from our start, from the, the moment that the museum was opened in 1923, we've had a, a gallery devoted to, to Korean art. We also have, a, we have three exceptionally important Goryeo paintings, three of only 16, for instance, that exist in the United States. Mm. So we now have a collection which is almost 800 pieces in Korean, growing all of the time. Um, and I think the, the relationship that museums had with, uh, with Korea and with Korean institutions, although longstanding, has really blossomed in the last f three or four years in particular. We're very fortunate, very grateful to the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism for supporting our work. As I said, the Korea Foundation has been uh, instrumental in supporting our efforts to appoint that first ever Korean curator. We work closely with the Korea Cultural Center and we do a variety of exhibitions, loan shows. We've worked closely with the National Museum. Um, but we've also done some fun events such as uh, worked with the Korean Cultural Center and did a small um, fashion show last summer. Mm. So we'll be doing more now that we have um, a memorandum of understanding that we signed uh, in the spring. Minister, the then Minister of Culture paid us a visit, the director of the museum, but also uh, the First Lady of Korea whom I had the great pleasure of showing around our galleries. Wow, so it seems like it's been an incredibly, particularly busy year this year then, uh, related to the museum and uh, the collaboration that the museum is having with Korea. Uh, let's talk more about that curatorial position. As we said, it's the first time uh, that the museum is having uh, a position like this, the first specialist in the field of Korean art and culture. Can you tell us more about it? Well, I look forward to telling you more and more. We're very close to uh, to finding uh, just the right candidate for the position. Mm. I think what's significant is it's typical, and understandably so, uh, for positions to be framed in art museums as curatorial positions mm. in art. But we quite, quite deliberately framed this as um, Korean art and culture because... We're interested in not only in expanding our collection, not only in continuing to build those collaborations with, with museums and institutions here in Korea, but we're also looking for leadership to help us build out that programming. Because, as you'll know, increasingly in art museums, we're very keen to reach new audiences. Mm. We're keen to reach young audiences. We're keen to reach audiences that consist of that growing uh, Asian American community that is not only in Washington, D.C., but nationally. So leadership in that curatorial position will allow us to, to do the kind of work that we've begun, but we'll really be able to advance it. Especially at a time when Korean culture is really spreading like wildfire, especially among uh, younger people at the moment. It's it, incredible to watch, really. It's immensely popular, and um, we, um, we celebrated our the real culmination of our centennial celebrations took place in May. And we did some important exhibitions and, and a variety of programming, a gala, all sorts of fun that we had. But I think if you were to ask any of my colleagues, they would, uh, they would say that the height of it was a performance um, given by Eric Nam. Right. Who came to the came to the museum and performed for us. So. And that was for the Centennial Show? It was. Yes. Uh, I saw that story as well. Uh, he's a great ambassador uh, for Korean culture, uh, definitely, at the moment, uh, just with his global popularity as well. He's a great ambassador. He, um, he, he and his, his colleagues paid a visit to the museum. He is um, not just a great ambassador for, for Korea, but I think... Uh, extremely reflective and, and, and an articulate uh, and concerned spokesman for, for mental health and depression. And, and, mm. and, and so he's, he's really a remarkable person and we were so privileged to, to work with him. Meanwhile, uh, another recent announcement was that the National Museum of Korea has designated uh, six museums in five countries where they aim to promote Korean art and culture. Uh, and of course, one of them was the Smithsonian's National uh, Museum of Asian Art. Can you tell us more about that? 
delighted to have entered into that uh, agreement. We'll be doing a variety of things. Um, one is expanding, enhancing and expanding the gallery presence in our museum devoted to, to Korean art. Another is we'll be uh, building exchange programs and, and sending staff here and, and, uh, and having staff from Korea come to our museum. Of course, we're going to be building out the programming that we've begun. So it provides uh, the, the, the kind of framework and, and support so that activities, which sometimes in the museum world can be a sporadic or ad hoc, are really sustained over the life of the four or five year grant. So it's a, it's a wonderful, I think, um, endorsement of the work that we've done, but at the same time promises the kind of collaboration where we can learn, and this is something that I'd really like to emphasize, as much from our Korean colleagues as they can learn from us. And you mentioned the MOU that was signed earlier this year as well. The signing ceremony, as you said, was attended by uh, First Lady Kim Gun Hee, the uh, then Minister for Culture, Sports and Tourism, Park Bo Gyun. Can you tell us a bit more about what this MOU means as well? Well, what it, that essentially does is it provides an umbrella under which the activities that I just described can take place. Mm. So it provides that institution to institution framework so that when uh, colleagues um, at the National Museum here or um, at any other uh, museum here wish to collaborate with us, for instance, for a joint exhibition or for a staff exchange, we can realize those plans quickly. We can, the, the MOU allows us to facilitate those plans and, and make them happen. So it seems there's a lot going on, as I said, when it comes to uh, Korean art and the museum. It's an exciting time. Looking ahead then, what are the future goals for the museum when it comes to Korean art, especially under your leadership? As you said, uh, you've been in the position since 2018. So that time, Korean art has really uh, exploded, as you said. So what do you hope to uh, achieve? What do you hope to see? Well, I should say that I think things m would have moved even faster had there not been that interruption of a pandemic, which mm. did slow us down. Mm. Um, but I think uh, there is, as you've been saying, uh, a real appetite on the part of the American public and international visitors to the Smithsonian to learn more about, about Korean culture in general. I think um, Korean contemporary Korean art in particular is is an area in which uh, we'll be expanding. I should say that just 10 or 12 days ago, we opened an, uh, an exhibition by the artist Park Chang Young. And in the spring, we'll also be opening uh, a one piece exhibition by De Ho Sa. So we're becoming more active in contemporary uh, um, Korean art. And I think that's an area where we can grow in particular. But at the same time, on the programming side, we got that first start with a wonderful Choose Suck Celebration, we'll be doing much more of that. So I think it's really a question of of expanding our, our portfolio of activity, but at the same time, building those relationships with museums and institutions here so we can be, we can be helpful to their efforts to raise their visibility mm. and to popularize uh, Korean culture more generally. We have a very international uh, visitor uh, profile, about 25 to 30 million visitors come to the Smithsonian every year. Um, not all of them have the opportunity to come to Seoul. So mm. it's our way of bringing a little bit of Seoul to them. A win-win situation, as Koreans like to say. <laughs> Indeed. Well, we wish you luck on your endeavours and hope that uh, collaboration with Korea continues to grow and flourish for uh, both our sake and yours as well. And that's all for Touch Basin's Hole this week. We'll be speaking to Chase Robinson, the director for the Smithsonian's National Museum of Asian Art. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you.